I enter the holy, holy. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We enter into the holy and holies through the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. I worship you. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We bless your name today, Jesus. Hallelujah. We welcome you today, Jesus. We worship you today, Jesus. We welcome you into this broadcast, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let your anointing fall afresh on this line today. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Your name is holy, Lord. Holy. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God bless you, man of God. David Sanchez, God bless you, prophet, pastor. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord, today. Father, we thank you today. We ask that, Lord, your Holy Spirit will fall fresh upon this line today. Lord, you've given me this series to teach on the principles of prayer, keys to the kingdom, as we have started our prophetic prayer line again coming on Friday nights at 7 o'clock. The Lord wants to begin to open up people's prayers and begin to get people's prayers answered because a lot of people you know we're not getting prayers answered we got a lot of warfare in the second heaven going on and if you remember daniel uh, uh was praying and fasting for 21 days and he was fasting and trying to get his prayer through and michael was sent to fight the prince of persia the prince prince of grecia a lot of times god gets our prayers instantly but if the angels of god are ascending and descending the ladder of the lord according to genesis 28 uh, 12 and 17 there's a portals that are coming down and they're bringing the answers to the prayers a lot of times there's a second heaven principalities power spiritual wickedness and high places rulers of darkness this age that are that are keeping those uh, prayers from being answered God has already answered him and I did a teaching yesterday that he uh, as soon as you ask him you abide in him and abide in his love as soon as you ask him he will give whatsoever you have asked so God has already answered the prayer a lot of the prayers just aren't getting through to come back the answer or the manifestation which is the manifestation of the prayer so the Lord is going to have me teach today yesterday I I taught about abiding in Jesus' love, abiding in love for one another. That was the first key the Lord gave me. The second key is, of course, the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, the Holy Ghost. Okay, so uh, we we have to have the Holy Spirit. We're born again in Christ Jesus, John chapter 3, but then we need to be baptized. Uh, John, you know, John said that in Matthew 3 and 11, that I baptize you with water, but he that comes after me is greater than I, and he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. So the the Jesus comes and baptizes us with the Holy Ghost and fire after we're born again in Christ, John chapter 3, but we need to be uh, have the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire upon us, the Comforter, the Holy Spirit. So I put up some scriptures there. There's so much I could teach on this. I could do a whole series, but this is the second key the comforter we need the comforter the holy spirit the spirit of what truth it's the spirit of truth because the world cannot receive the spirit of truth because they 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 have not the truth so they cannot receive the spirit of truth okay so they have the spirit of the world if you look in ephesians chapter 2 it talks about the 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 prince of the power of the air this is the the prince of the power of the air is literally satan it is a spirit notice it's a spirit that worketh in the sons of disobedience so if you look in ephesians chapter 2 i think it is 1 through 3 there there's a spirit that worketh in the sons of disobedience that's the prince of the power of the air now notice there's there's i don't want to get in too deep but there's five five uh airways vision waves gamma waves brain waves 
uh, different waves, vision waves. And this is why a lot of times we're not getting our prayers through. We're having problems even on our broadcast because Satan is a prince of the power of the air. This spirit is working through the sons of disobedience. Now we as children of God have the spirit of truth is the comforter. That's what makes us different from the spirit of the world, those that are in the world. So we're separated, consecrated unto the Lord set apart. So let's just look at a few verses. I put some verses. Let's go through John through um, John. You know, the, 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 the school of the Holy Spirit is what I call it. John 14 through 16, chapters 14 through 16. But let's just start. I'm going to go through this as quick as I can, try to get it through. But uh, I want everybody to get it. Let's look first. Um, let's look at John 14 first. Um, let's look at John 14, um, 26. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things into your remembrance whatsoever I've said unto you. Hallelujah. And that's First John 2 and 26 and 27 and 28 says, uh, uh, The anointing that you have received, you not need that any man teach you, but the anointing that you have received is a truth and not a lie. It shall teach you of all things, and you shall abide in that anointing. 1 John 2, 27. So look at that. This is what he's saying. The Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things, bring all things into remembrance whatsoever I've said unto you. Now notice, I'm going to keep going deeper on this, but notice in Luke 12, 12, and Matthew 10, 19, and Mark uh, 13, 11, that that Jesus said that if when we come into the last days, if we're delivered up to the synagogue, don't worry what you will say, because it says in Luke twelve twelve, for the Spirit will teach you what to say in that very hour. So the Spirit of Truth will teach you all things what to say, and bring all the things into remembrance through the anointing. First John two and twenty seven, an anointing that you have received. I'm gonna do more on the teaching on the anointing. We have to be anointed, okay? So there's a difference between the baptism of the Holy Ghost and then the anointing of the Holy Ghost. But that, I'm not gonna hit that on this one. So now let's let's keep moving on and go on into uh, with your prince. Okay, let's go on into John fifteen now and look. Because uh, t- he's talking about the spirit of truth, the comforter, over in John 15, too. It, let's look at John 15, 26, and 27. But when the comforter comes, which I will send you from the Father, even the spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me, and ye also shall bear witness, because you have been with me from the beginning." So Jesus is the first, last, the beginning, and the end. We know we've been front with him from the beginning. This is what marks us as disciples of Christ. Let's look at verse 17 of uh, John 14, 17. Even, even that spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but you know him, for he dwelleth with you and he shall be in you. John 14, 18, and I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you. So the Lord said, I, the spirit of truth will come to you as you abide in him. This is a teaching that he had me give the key yesterday. The spirit of truth will come, the comforter, the Holy Spirit will come to you. He will not leave you comfortless. And he will teach you all things, bring all things into remembrance whatsoever Jesus has said unto you, to us through the scripture. He's bringing back the scriptural remembrance, but also he's given us script, uh, revelation, which is a, uh, the word, Greek word apocalyptis, which is the unveiling, the uncovering, the, the knowledge of things that are deep. Okay, so I'm going to go back, come back, but let's look at uh, 1 Corinthians 2. I'm going to show you this is what the Spirit, 1 Corinthians 2, verse 9. But as is written, I has not seen nor ear heard, neither has entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But listen to this. See, most people stop right there, but listen. This is what we receive as a Spirit, right? We are children of the Spirit, so... 
Second, uh, 1 Corinthians 2, verse 9 and 10. But God, listen, but God has revealed them unto us by his Spirit. Why? For the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. But who, but what man shall know these things? What man knoweth the things of man but the Spirit, right? The human spirit that is in the man. Also, what things of God knoweth any man but the Spirit of God? Okay, now we have received the Spirit. We have, now we have received not the Spirit of the world. I was just talking about the Prince of the Power of the Air. Uh, Ephesians chapter 2, that's the, the Spirit that works in the sons and daughters of disobedience. But we, it says right here, 1 Corinthians 2, verse uh, 12, that we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit, which is a small s, pneuma, meaning it's a, the, there's the spirit, capital S, but the spirit, small s, is like God has a spirit, a soul, and a body. He's triune, just like we are. So the spirit, okay, the spirit which is of God, that we might, listen to this, know the things that are freely given unto us. So this scripture right here in 1 Corinthians 2, verse 9 through 16, everybody quotes this, but they stop it. I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor has entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those who love him, but we don't keep going. But it says, but God has revealed them unto us by the Spirit, the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of man, save the Spirit of man which is in him. Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Now he, we have received the Spirit, we have not received the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is from God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us. Let's look at verse 13. Which things also we speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches comparing spiritual things with spiritual. So this is the Holy Ghost teaching us the spiritual things, and, and this stuff is spiritually discerned, it says, to the people of the world that have the spirit. They don't know this stuff. They cannot have the deep things of God. They cannot go up into the realm of the spirit. They cannot be caught up into the spirit. They cannot know the secrets to the servants, the prophets, Amos 3 and 7. They can't know the mysteries of the kingdom. But we can. Let's stop uh, church looking at this and saying, oh, I has not seen or no ears heard, all that, and not look that God, even in this scripture, gave us the answer. He reveals it to us, the hidden wisdom, the deep things, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. That's that's uh, 1 Corinthians 2, verse 13. And the reference is that is 1 Corinthians 1, 4, and 2 Peter 1 and, uh, 1 and 16. Now look at verse 14, 1 Corinthians 2, 14, but the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are, what, foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. See, they're spiritually discerned. He can't even know the things that we know unless you're born again in Christ and been baptized with the Holy Ghost and you have this comforter, the Spirit of Truth dwelling inside of you he will be in you and he will be with you i also do a teaching on the holy ghost needs to be upon us to anoint us but that's a whole nother teaching but he is in us he's with us but he also shall be upon us anointing us so that's another teachings i actually did that in the uh, last friday's prayer line on the miracle signs and wonders teaching on miracle signs and wonders but let's look at second corinthians 2 15 again but he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judged to no one. Verse 16, For who has known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Christos, Creo, the Creo, kingly anointing, the anointed one, Christ, Christos, the anointed one. We have his mind, the mind that's in Christ. So we can know these spiritual things through the Holy Ghost. We can know these things that the world doesn't know. God will reveal his secret to the servants, the prophets, Amos 3 and 7. That is us, y'all. This is the 
not only the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, pastors, teachers, fivefold ministry, but all believers have the spirit of truth. So I pray, I pray that we pray for the spirit of truth. Now I'm going to continue to go on in John 14, 15, and, and also uh, 16. So let's go on a little bit further. So I gave you the scripture, uh, John 15, 26, 27. But when the Comforter come, whom I will send... Uh, Send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, comes from the Father, he shall testify of me. Of, of who? Jesus. So this is how we see the Godhead. The, people call it the Trinity, but there's really, I don't believe in it. There's a doctrine of the Godhead. It's not called the Trinity anywhere in the Bible. Godhead is Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Okay? So, uh, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me, and ye also shall bear witness, because you have been with me from the beginning. Okay, now let's look at John 16, and this is going to be the last part where he shows a little bit more on, in John 16, and, I, and the Lord wants you to study this on your own. I'm just giving you scriptures to look at. John 16, 7 through, um, hallelujah, I think 15 or so. So John 16, 7, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for me, for you, that I go away. This is Jesus telling us and, he, and his disciples, it's expedient that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. John 16 and 8. And when he has come, he will what? Reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Verse 9. Of sin because they believe not on me, not only in me, but on me. Of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me not. And of judgment because the prince, there he is, of the world is judged. The prince of the power of the air, Satan. There he is. Principality. Okay, and I'm going to do a whole course on, on principalities, power, spiritual wickedness, uh, and high places and the different ranks of the different hierarchy. And so we always quote uh, um, 2 Corinthians 10, 5, we wrestle, uh, and, and Ephesians 6, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against angels, angels, principalities, powers, spiritual wickedness. Those are different levels and ranks of demons. And if we can understand what each level, a prince is a principality over a region. This is really what, uh, it's like a puppeteer that pulls strings over a region. So each one of them has different, and the imps that we fight, the little demons that we cast out of people, those are disembodied spirits those aren't even part of the fallen angels that hierarchy right there that's a whole nother uh the the demons we cast out of people are disembodied uh giants that the giants that were in the land those disembodied spirits of the giants the demons we cast out those are the ground patrol the imps and then there's eavesdropping spirits i'm gonna do a whole class on this eavesdropping spirits watchers uh scanners all kinds of different uh that satan has all these uh puppeteers pulling these strings over cities and over people that's the the dominions and thrones and the different hierarchies in in the spirit realm so i'm going to continue uh and finish this out john 16 uh 7 i read in 8 and when he has come okay he will reprove the world we got through that Okay, verse 11, verse 12 of John 16. I have yet many things. Listen to this. Here's what it is. John 16, 12. I have many things to say unto you, but you cannot hear them now. How bet when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For listen, why? Why? For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Hallelujah. So there's the Lord, the Spirit of truth, not only showing, bringing things to our remembrance, but also prophecy, showing us things to come, showing us the future. John 16, uh, 15 uh, let's see, 13, 14, 15. He will show you things to come. That's also a reference to John 14, 17. Verse 14, John 16, 14. And he shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and what? Show it unto you. Okay? He'll receive of me and show it to you. Okay? Then John 16, 15. All things that the Father has are mine. 
who's me? Jesus, right? They're his, therefore said I, that he shall take of mine and show it unto you. So this is how the Godhead, Father, Son, Holy Ghost works together. So I want you to study these scriptures out, John 14 through uh, uh, 16. And then also I want to, you know, I, I also 2 Corinthians chapter 2, everybody's always preaching, you know, I has not seen nor you heard, but keep on going down to verse 16, but God has revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the Spirit searches the deep things of God. So this is, we, the, and it even says the things that are freely given to us. So God isn't trying to hold back anything from us. He's trying to make the mysteries of the kingdom known, his secrets known unto us. He's trying to get our prayers answered. He's not trying to hold back anything. It says right here, be careful how you hear, because how, when Jesus said, be careful how you hear, because to what measure you hear, it shall be measured back. That word measure there in the Greek and Hebrew is metron. It's just like a metron is a measure. So it's the same principle of the kingdom as whatsoever people you forgive, it shall be meet back to you the same forgiveness. Or to much is given, much is required, or it'll be measured back to you. Uh, when he's in Luke, I, I believe he says, um, to much is given, more is required and all that. But then he says, to what measure you give, it shall be metron, that's the word in the Greek, measured back to you. Same with hearing. When we hear from God, the same is that word is metron. Whatever metron or measure that we hear, he'll measure that back to us. But he can't continue to give us more. He says it right here, John 16 and 12. I have yet many things, many, many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them or hear them so he can't give it to us because he wants us to hear you know to 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 digest and meditate upon just like he told joshua and joshua 1 and 9 to meditate on the word uh psalms 1 uh you know he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth fruit in his season whatsoever he does shall prosper his leaf shall also not wither he meditates day and night on the word of god so that gives no room, James 4 and 8, I believe it says, resist the devil and he'll flee from you. So it's literally giving the devil no room. I'm giving him no room by the Holy Ghost, the Comforter, the Spirit of Truth in me. And no truth and a lie can't fit in the same, the Father of lies, Satan is the Father of lies. They can't fit in the same area. They can't fit in the same vessel. So uh, even though we know with Peter, one minute he was saying, Thou art the Son of God. The next minute he was saying, Oh no, Lord, you can't go. You know, and he rebuked him and said, Get behind me, Satan. But you're not, you know, savoring the things of God. You know, but we can do that too. But we should, we need to also come against the spirit of double mindedness. I take authority over that spirit of double mindedness every day and I cast it out. Because uh, James says, uh, let not a double-minded man think that he's unstable in all his ways. Let him think that he not think that he'll receive anything from God. So let's 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 pray, Father, for the Spirit of Truth, the Comforter. Let's get rid of the lies of the enemy in my life, uh, and believe that God wants to bring the Spirit of Truth, the Comforter, to us to give us this key. Even if we have him, it says even in John 3, 34, that he wants to give us the fullness. Uh, in Ephesians 2 uh, and 3, talks 3, 19 and 3, 20, the fullness of God, the full measure of God. And then is a whole different measure of Christ, the Christos, the anointing that's actually for the five-fold ascension gifts over in Ephesians 4. But there's different words. The words doma used there versus charismata in um, 1 Corinthians 12. But there's so much information I can give on it. But let's just pray for an extra measure, a metron of the Holy Ghost and fire today. Let a fresh anointing according to Psalms 92 and 10 fall fresh upon us. Father, exalt our horror like a unicorn and anoint us with fresh oil of the Spirit of God. Lord, we thank you. We prophesy, declare, and decree that a greater work shall we do according to John uh, 14. 14 and 12, you said, Lord, that you have gone away, you've given us a comforter, and greater work shall we do than you, Jesus, because you went to the Father, that we will be able to do healings, miracles, signs, and wonders. We'll go forth in the spirit and the power of Elijah to lay hands on the sick, cast
cast out devils. Freely we have been given, free, received, freely we shall give. So we're going forth and preaching the gospel, laying hands on the sick, evangelizing, and believing that every time we pray for somebody, we'll pray with our whole heart. Jesus said, if your eye be single, your whole body will be full of light. This is the key to getting miracles. I'm going to do more on it is when Jesus says your eye must be single. So your eye has to be single. You can't have any double mindedness. You have to be single minded. And it's, and I'm doing a course on, um, actually praying with your whole heart and receiving instant miracles and healing every time through Mel Bonham being trained by him. He's mentoring me. We're talking every day. I went to a miracle crusade. He laid his hands on me. Really, he, he he sees miracles everybody prays for 99% of the time and the Lord has given me that same anointing because he laid his hands and imparted the gift so I'm believing for instant miracles healing every time I pray for somebody um, so this Friday night when you guys come on if you need healing in your body you need a miracle in your finances in your home come on Friday night at 7 o'clock I'm going to prophesy and I'm we're going to work in miracles so far I'm seeing testimonies come back after I went to this miracle crusade on January 4th and got this anointing. I already had the gift of prophecy in the office of the prophet. Prophet Chuck Pierce in Corinth, Texas laid his hands and imparted just opened up the gift. I was already a prophet from my mother's womb, Jeremiah 1 and 5, but he, he, the church will commission you. A senior prophet will come and prophesy over you if you're one, called into the office of a fivefold, or Jesus will appear to you also. Uh, Numbers 12 and 6. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will show myself to him in a dream or in a vision. And even as Moses was my servant, he talked to Moses face to face. So many prophets and apostles in this hour, God is talking to us face to face as he did prophet Moses. So this is how we know that Jesus will appear to us in a vision or a dream or in a, what's called an ekrame or a mara vision literally right in front of us ekrame uh is more of a physical like he was uh when he walked in through the wall and and told and look at how jesus in john 20 he came in and he met everybody's unbelief at their level even thomas said i won't believe unless i stick my finger in there doubting thomas but look jesus met him and he allowed Thomas to stick his finger in and say now you to believe so that proves that Jesus will meet us at our level of faith and he'll work with us okay because he wants to give us the Holy Ghost the comforter and 2 Corinthians chapter 2 I has not seen nor ear heard nor has entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those who love him but God, God has revealed them to us by his spirit so he wants to show us the deep things of God things that are spiritually discerned to the spirit those that are operating in the spirit of the world, the prince of the power of the air. So we thank you for this teaching today, Father. We praise you. We glorify you. We lift your name up, Jesus. Your name is above every name that at that name of Jesus Christ, according to Philippians 2, 9 through 11, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess to the glory of God the Father in the heavens, in the earth, and under the earth. So God raised Jesus Christ from the dead and seated him up in heavenly places and we're seated with him according to Ephesians 2 and 9 and in Colossians 3 and 1 says so we should seek those things that are above. So we're literally seated as kings, priests, and queens and prophets up next to Christ in our kingly and queenly. Uh, uh, so let's not operate from the earth realm. Let's operate from the throne room. That's where God wants us to operate. We're seated there now in heavenly places according to Ephesians 2 and 6. And we've been raised up with Christ to sit with him. A great prayer is to pray Ephesians 1, 17 through 20. Ephesians 1, 17, 20. The God of our Father, of our Lord Jesus Christ will give unto us the spirit. There it is again. The spirit of wisdom and of revelation and to the knowledge of him and open the eyes, enlighten the eyes of our heart that we might be enlightened. So he's opening up our eyes to see in our heart that we might be enlightened, that we may, may know what is the hope of his calling, what is the exceeding riches in the saints, and what is the exceeding great power towards us who believe when he wrought in Jesus Christ, when he raised him up from the dead and seated him in heavenly places far above all principalities, powers, dominions, thrones, and gave him to be head over the church.
So that's the mystery of the ages. That's the mystery. And the, the word says even in, I believe it is First Peter, that we're, in, we're coming in Romans 16, that we're coming into the fullness of time, the restitution of all things. It's a new uh, dispensation, a new era, the last days. We're entering into the last days. This is the last days we're coming into. We're going to see such great moves of the Spirit, but also we're going to see such great opposition from the enemy. And the Lord is saying, even many of you are facing opposition right now but listen to me my child keep seeking my face pray that you that my spirit of truth my comforter says the lord will come and abide and dwell with you and shall be in you that and he shall teach you all things and show you also things to come says the lord even according to isaiah 42 and 9 the former things have come to pass behold new things do i declare unto you before they spring forth i tell you of them so that is literally the realm of the spirit of prophecy he'll show you things to come but also isaiah 42 and 9 the former things have come to pass new things hallelujah do i declare unto you before they spring forth i shall tell you of them isaiah 43 and 19 behold i do a new thing shall you not know it it shall spring forth. I make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Hallelujah. So we know that in new things, even I, I was reading in Matthew uh, 13 and 52, it says, every man who has been instructed to the kingdom or as a scholar or a scribe in the kingdom of heaven is like a householder who brings out from his treasure both things new and old so we bring out new things and we bring out old things so we begin to continue to show the body of christ reveal it to the body by the spirit that's in us the new things that god's getting ready to do these are the the the, the things that isaiah 42 9 he wants to show us in the spirit but we first have to have the the comforter the spirit of truth in us in jesus name okay i love everybody i'll see See you guys on um, Friday night, 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time and 6 p.m. Uh, Central Standard Time. I'm going to be praying and prophesying over everybody work, and also uh, working in miracle signs and wonders. Whoever needs healing in their bodies, have people come because I'm going to be in prayer and fasting even tonight, the Lord told me this morning to be in fasting, so I haven't eaten yet today, all the way into tomorrow night. So uh, I'm not going to eat. I'm going to pray, stay in my prayer closet, uh, Matthew 6, 6, whatever you ask. In secret, God will reward thee openly. So it's time to go into the secret place of the Most High, under the shadow of the Almighty, in the secret place, Psalm 91, and get into prayer and get in your secret closet begin to ask god says the lord for the things that you have been praying for that haven't been able you haven't been able to break through and when matthew 18 through 18 18 through 20 when two or three are gathered in my name there i am in the midst so when you guys come back on on friday night we'll join our faith together and the lord said he'll meet us there because we're joining our faith together as one body in christ we're coming in one place in one accord acts chapter 2 this is when the greatest power power fell on the church with the day of pentecost the acts 2, 2 church is when we're all together in one place one accord and we're believing matthew 18 18 to 20 where two or three are gathered in my name there i am in the midst so jesus is getting ready he wants to answer these prayers uh, people heal the sick uh you know i'm just a vessel it's the spirit and if we look in mark 16 and 20 it says they went forth preaching everywhere and the lord jesus um, confirmed his word with what signs following okay it says these signs shall follow them that believe in my name right so signs shall follow them that believe that word signs is supernatural miracles in the senses realm proven that jesus christ is lord and then there's also wonders is supernatural miracles in the imagination realm proven that jesus christ is lord so that's the word signs and wonders okay so there's there's a lot on that i could teach but i'll see everybody uh on friday night at seven o'clock 
The Lord is going to have a word of prophecy for you. If you need healing in your body, if you need a miracle of finances, I hear that there's going to be such great financial provision poured out and there's going to be a, a, a sevenfold restoration according to Joel 2.25, Proverbs 6, 30, 31. The enemy has been caught. It, it, he has to be restored a sevenfold blessing. And when I heard the Lord also say, even if it bankrupts him, it says there in Proverbs 6, 30, and 31, even if it bankrupts him, he has to restore sevenfold. So people's recompense for years and years and years of finances that have been stolen from you. The Lord says that if you combine your faith with my prophet, this this. Friday night as I'm going into prayer and fasting that literally he's going to release great provisions and finances going to release um, things that you've been praying for even I hear the Lord say that there's according to Matthew 6 and 33 those that have been seeking the king seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness he shall add all things unto you I hear that people need things like you know in the natural people even need like vehicles cars they need um, a place to live houses apartments all those things we are the saints of God and the, the wealth of the wicked shall be transferred unto the righteous so God wants us to prosper he wants his church to have money uh, we we be tested on it, but once we get it, we can become kingdom builders. He doesn't want us to suffer. Uh, not having the things that we need. So I hear that he not only wants to release finances, he wants to release uh, things that people have been needing, like uh, vehicles and, and houses and those kind of things, new keys to apartments and buildings even, like uh, uh, you know finances to build ministries, uh, non-profit organizations, all that kind of stuff. I hear the Lord saying he wants to release that. Uh, he wants us to get these principles of prayer kingdom keys to unlock our destinies down um, so that we can take those keys of the kingdom what Jesus said whatever so ever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven whatsoever you loose on the earth shall be loosed in heaven Matthew 18 18 that those are the keys so we want to begin to bind up the things that the enemy has uh, had on our life all these years and begin to loose the power of the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit, and the provisions. Uh, Philippians 4, 19 says, My God shall supply all your need according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus our Lord. So if God has commissioned you and sent you out, He's already got the provision for you. It's already ready. You've just probably going through a, a preparation season, a season of preparing. But He's a, when you get to that place and that time, the Lord is saying He's going to release everything that you need for that season so even as you're going through this process the lord is saying just be patient as you get through this process you you i will release those finances to you i will release everything that i promised i prophesied to you uh first timothy talks about uh one i believe it is one in 18 talks about war over the prophecies paul tells timothy to war or make a good warfare over your prophecies. So as you go back and look at your different prophecies, what you have written down, your visions, back of 2, uh, verse 1 through 3, says begin to war over those prophecies. War over them uh, and, and begin to believe again. Believe for all the, the dreams and the visions, all the things that even for great, things take the limits off of God is what I hear him saying take the limits off me my child because I want you to begin to dream again I want you to dream even as what you did when you first when I first called you uh, you had all those dreams of, of all the things that I called you to do the ministries I wanted you to open the books I wanted you to write all the things that I wanted you to do the churches I wanted you to build uh, the disciples I wanted you to go out and make those things God says I'm going to bring all that recompense around your inheritance, you're crossing over the Jordan, uh, we're going over, we're going over the uh, the river, uh, take your mantle off Elijah and, and part the waters of the Jordan, go over dry shot, it's time to get over, over the hump and get into the promised land, thus says the spirit of the living God, hallelujah, God bless everybody, I love you in Jesus name, God bless you, um, Pastor David, bless you, bye bye.